Number five on this list is war. So this one's pretty general, but the Bible definitely touched on it quite a bit, so it feels fair to include it. Now war arose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come, for the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them dead and night before our God. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, for they loved not their lives even until death. Whew, what a mouthful, guys. But that is just one passage discussing war, but... Frankly, there, there are just so many of them. Sometimes they talk about specific wars being fought between certain groups, but a lot of the time it's just war in general. Sometimes it even discusses how God will be with you when you go to war, which is actually kind of an incentive to fight. This book and what it preaches has been the catalyst for so many battles in human history, and it's not unreasonable to think that it's going to happen again. I certainly hope that there is no more major wars in human history, and this predict isn't right, but I'm not going to be holding my breath. Number four on this list is the seven bowls. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple telling the seven angels, go and pour out onto earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth and harmful and painful sores came upon the people who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea and it became like the blood of a corpse and every living thing died that was in the sea. The third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel in charge of the water say, Just are you, O Holy One, who is and who was, for you brought these judgments. That's a passage from the Bible, and those are only three of the bowls. There are literally four more of these things that get even worse. The fourth one causes the sun to burn people. The fifth one covers the world in darkness and has people bite their tongues off. The sixth one dries up a massive river. And the seventh one causes huge earthquakes. So, not really the best of times, if you ask me. Now, let's be real, folks. Are all of these things going to happen all at once? Probably not. But some of it definitely could. Is there a reality where I see all of the fish in the oceans getting poisoned by something and then ultimately destroying the worldwide ecosystem? Potentially. Could I see a massive earthquake ravaging parts of the world and causing a horrible chain reaction killing millions? Yeah, I mean, it could happen. All of these bowls are pretty horrible, and we just have to hope that none of these things happen to us now, because the ramifications, they'd be pretty catastrophic. Number three on this list is the persecution of Christians. Religion, although it can do great good, has also caused horrible evil. Throughout history, we can see that religion is basically the leading cause for humans to start fighting each other. What someone believes and the rules to which they govern their life is really important to us humans, and Christianity is no different. The Bible has talked a bunch about the persecution of Christians before. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. That's just one of the passages in the Bible talking about it, but we also have some other ones that are just straight to the point reading, indeed, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now, Christians being persecuted is nothing new. This is a prediction that's actually already come to fruition many times over. Like I said before, religion has started many wars in the past, and the persecution of Christians has certainly been a reason for a couple of them. It's possible that this isn't actually done though. I'd like to believe that the world is getting to a place where one can believe what they choose to believe, and that's fine for them, but the fact of the matter is we just simply aren't there yet. There has always been and continues to be the persecution of not just Christians, but tons of groups 
groups with all different beliefs. It's sad to say, but this might not be over yet, and this prediction may continue to be proven correct. Number two on this list is famine. For probably most of the people watching this video, famine or the thought of going hungry most likely isn't that close to you. However, there are still millions of people in the world that suffer greatly from famine and die from it all the time. There will be great earthquakes and in various places, famine and pestilences. And there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. Famine is mentioned a lot in the Bible and I think it was probably a sign of the times. We have to remember that when the Bible was written, the world was not nearly as advanced as it is today. Food and water, basic resources for survival were not a given by any means, but something that people had to fight for on the daily. If you had these resources in abundance, then that was considered a luxury and you were probably really wealthy. Even though we don't live in those times anymore, and now for a lot of people, water is at your nearest tap and food at your nearest supermarket, Famine is still a real thing. It should also be noted that we should never take food for granted. Some experts are predicting that if global warming continues at the drastic rate that it's going, food will become far harder to grow and get a lot scarcer. Fingers crossed we can prevent this from happening and keep everybody well fed in the future. And finally, number one on this list is an asteroid. Listen to this passage from the Bible and tell me this isn't just a tad bit concerning. The first angel blew his trumpet and there followed hail and fire mixed with blood, and these were thrown upon the earth. And a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned up. The second angel blew his trumpet, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. The third angel blew his trumpet, and a great star fell from heaven, blazing like a torch and it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became wormwood and many people died from the water because it had been made bitter. So I don't know about you guys, but the prospect of getting hit with three separate asteroids really doesn't sound like a great time to me. The way that they describe it may be a bit tame too, to be honest. If we're gonna get hit with three separate things from space, then it's very likely that more than a third of the trees are gonna burn up. In fact, it would probably be the end of the world as we know it. I've done a lot of research on the possibility of an asteroid coming and crashing into the Earth, and it's a real concern. Luckily, scientists don't predict anything in the near future, but that doesn't mean that it still won't happen. In fact, statistically speaking, eventually it will happen. Whether we're ready for this impact or are capable of defending ourselves from it, that's another question entirely. Number five, Mars landing. Among his many, many criticisms, Nostradamus wrote a light on Mars failing. Now initially, it seems like just a vague statement until you remember that a few years ago, the Opportunity rover, which was traveling through Mars, broadcasted its last message from the surface of the red planet. Its last message read, my battery is low and it's getting dark, which was the final transmission received from the Opportunity rover to NASA when the solar powered robot was caught in a massive dust storm, described as one of the biggest dust storms observed on Mars, which engulfed the planet whole and turned the day into night, smothering the poor robot's battery, leading it to send that final, poignant transmission. Now could this be the light on Mars failing that Nostradamus was referring to? It's hard to argue that it doesn't match up just a little bit eerily. I mean, come on, a light on Mars failing and here you have a sad robot saying that its battery is dying out. Of course, this won't be the end of mankind's journey to the red planet. Succeeding the Opportunity rover is the Curiosity rover, which is currently roving around the rock right now as you watch this video. Elon Musk, billionaire and Twitter poster, has made no secret whatsoever of his goals for Mars, calling it his life's greatest work and a mission central to humanity. SpaceX has made several of their own predictions about sending men to Mars, with their earliest estimates being that by 2030 we will have manned crews walking the surface of Mars. One has to wonder if Nostradamus could have ever predicted man walking on the surface of another planet. It's hard for us to imagine that, but Musk and his company insists it'll be sooner than we think. Now, Nostradamus also predicted back in his book of prophecies that you would subscribe to Top 5 Scary for the best scary stories and content on the web. Was he right? Because I'm pretty sure he was right. Number 4. Civil Unrest In that big old book of chilling quatrains, our good friend Nostradamus had this to write. The trumpet shakes with great discord, an agreement broken. Lifting the face to heaven, the bloody mouth will swim with blood, the face anointed with milk and honey lies on the ground. Probably the most 
outright sinister sounding of any of Nostradamus's prediction. Unless the trumpet shaking with great discord just means there's going to be an awesome marching band parade going through the world. This one could mean a lot, but analysts and experts of Nostradamus's work generally agree that they think this is predicting a time of great civil unrest dated for 2022. In the last couple years, we've already seen more civil unrest globally than we have before, with protests all over the globe for a number of social causes and pressing concerns. It's not unlikely at all to think that this sleeping discontent in the masses is going to keep rising, and it's very likely, very likely there will be more protests. This could tie in with a point we made in the previous Nostradamus video in which he highlighted a prediction for 2022 that said he believed that inflation and starvation would rise so much that so high the price of wheat that man is stirred to his fellow man to eat in his despair. Now obviously that could be taken literally, and I sincerely hope not, because I don't think I would taste good at all. I'm, I'm a bit stringy, and I eat terribly, so I would be awful for your diet. No, instead, myself and others think that it's alluding to the eat the rich sentiment and movement, and that these two predictions are linked together. You know, we've already seen so much unrest and so many protests for years from people struggling to get by. And as wages stay the same and working conditions worsen across the globe, it's increasingly worrisome that maybe someday it's all boiling into something really, really big. Finishing off in the original quatrain, Nostradamus wrote, sooner and later, you will see great changes made, dreadful horrors and vengeances. So maybe there's some positivity out of it, you know, some great changes, maybe we'll all get a four day weekend. We just have to ignore the dreadful horrors, I guess. Number three, a world at war. War, what is it good for? Absolutely nothing, I think is the usual accepted answer. Well, that good for nothing horseman of the apocalypse is always rearing its head, and Nostradamus predicted that we'd be experiencing a lot of them. A passage reads, Blue head shall white head harm in such degree, as France's good to both shall heir amount. Now, I, I, gonna be honest with you, I have no idea what that means. Uh, that doesn't really sound like much, unless there's a war of blue-headed people. I found one reading saying that this was predicting that France would be beaten at the World Cup, which is definitely possible, but I feel like Nostradamus would shoot a little higher than making sports bets. Most analysts seem to think that this point towards a war, so take a listen to this passage as well. This one reads, seven months the great war, people dead of evil doing. Ruin Evre shall not fall to the king. Now this prediction spells it out a little more clearly. Nostradamus thinks that there's going to be a great war that will spill over and into Europe, and that France will be a key player and a battleground for it. It's easy to see why this prediction could ring true, especially with how things are, you know, going the way they are right now. There's already enough tension brewing, and I think the threat of a world war is something that's kind of looming in the back of everyone's minds already while we watch the news. While there is always a war burning somewhere across this globe, this prediction specifically outlines that this could evolve into something much, much bigger. Into a great war, possibly, instead of one of those humble good ones. I'm joking, of course, there are no good ones. Possibly involving the entire planet in a global conflict. And while I'm sure a great war might make for a few good Hollywood action movies years after the fact, I think we should all work to avoid a third world war. Most trilogies usually have a really disappointing third one, you know? Let's just hope for our sake that Nostradamus isn't accurate on this one. Number two, an asteroid. A great fire will fall from the sky for three nights. The cause will appear both stupefying and marvelous. Shortly afterwards, there will be an earthquake. I doubt Nostradamus had ever seen fireworks, so the prediction of this being that we're all gonna have a great party with fireworks for three days and then we're gonna party so much it'll rumble the earth, I don't think that's super likely. No, fire from the sky and earthquakes are never a good thing. That's usually kind of the symptoms of like apocalyptic stuff alongside boiling seas and demon walking the earth, fire raining down. Now this line could refer to a couple things, possibly. It could be alluding to something man-made, like a strike of some kind, but translators and experts of Nostradamus's writings believe that this could be referring to an asteroid strike on the planet with devastating impact. Asteroids pass by the Earth every single day already, and the likelihood of one colliding with the planet and causing serious damage is a real possibility, and all of us go in the way of the dinosaurs. Fortunately for us, NASA has been cooking up predictions of their own, and they assure us that there is no danger of any collisions on record for 2022, or for the next hundred years, for that matter, claims a recent study. The asteroid Apophis was said to be flying worryingly close to Earth's orbit on track for a possible collision in 2029, and as well, a slight risk of collision in 2068. But thankfully, continued monitoring and updated scans have shown that everything should be all clear for the next hundred years. Nice to know that the seer can get wrong once every once in a while, you know? 
keeps him humble. Of course, there is always the possibility, like I mentioned, that that great fire falling from the sky could be referring to something a little darker than an asteroid. Like I said, maybe something man-made or something a bit more cosmic, like say a celestial fire of some kind. Speaking of celestial fires, actually funny, that's so funny, I was just talking about celestial fires earlier. Let's get on to the next point, which is number one, celestial fire and the new world order. Celestial fire and the new world order sounds like they would have been the absolute coolest 80s prog rock supergroup. I bet their first album was fantastic and the rest of them fell off. Disregard that fantasy for a minute and let's get back to the topic at hand. Nostradamus's predictions. In his big old book of prophecies, Nostradamus wrote that there would be a celestial fire on the royal edifice. So what does that mean? King Charles' house is about to catch fire? Well, something about the word celestial really throws this one for me. You know, celestial is not an adjective that you just toss in willy-nilly. I feel like that's reserved for when something is descending from the cosmos, end of days, apocalypse stuff. Well, not to worry. This prediction gets worse. They always get worse. The prediction goes on to state that through the ashes of this celestial fire, on the royal edifice will rise a new order, hey, another prog rock group, and that an unlikely alliance between two great powers will come together. What those two great powers could be, though, is anyone's guess. Is it Marvel and DC? Apple and Android? Coke and Pepsi? Whoever it may be, it's said that things will never be the same and the Alliance's effect will not be good for us. Now, Nostradamus wrote many predictions on the royal family, and some even claimed that he accurately predicted Queen Elizabeth's passing. He had this to add on about King Charles specifically. Because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who they later considered unworthy, the people will force out the King of the Islands, a man will replace who never expected to be King. Could this be referring to King Charles being replaced in favor of a new King? Could this be related to this new world order? Order Nostradamus is predicting with someone no one ever expected to be king and that unlikely alliance getting formed. We're not sure yet, but as time goes on, more and more of Nostradamus' predictions keep turning out to be true, so we'll find out soon enough, I'm sure, and you'll find out here. Coming in hot at number five is the Rapture, a true vintage as far as doomsday prophecies go. The Rapture is a belief in Christian faith held by few, notably an American evangelical belief, referring to an apocalyptic level event that describes the day Jesus returns, which will be heralded by the pious, righteous believers being ascended to the heavens to sit up in the clouds and clink glasses with Tupac and Elvis, while those that remain will have to fend for themselves on the desecrated earth, which will be taken over by the Antichrist and his army of demons. Although when I describe it like that, it makes it sound a lot more like it's the plot to doom. The rapture has no specific date, instead sort of existing in a it'll happen when it happens kind of state, which means it's great for making predictions of, because roughly once a week, someone will say we've got the rapture coming and thankfully be proven wrong. But the way things have been going lately, it's hard not to believe it could be coming anytime soon. We've got plagues, war, I think we just need conquest and famine and we've got ourselves all the horsemen of the apocalypse neatly lined up outside a stable. To take a quick second to lighten your load, if you've been liking what we do at Top 5 Scary, why not toss a little subscribe our way? I promise we don't only talk about end of days prophecies. We keep it scary, but you know, we keep it light. Number 4. Baba Vanga was a blind Bulgarian clairvoyant, famous for several predictions, a lot of which have worryingly come true. For example, many people believe she accurately predicted Princess Diana's passing this September attacks and the 2004 tsunami. Although Baba Vanga passed away in 1994, she left us with several worrying predictions for the future. She claimed in 2022 that we would experience another pandemic, as researchers would uncover a virus in Siberia and there would be flooding and drought across the world, a famine in India due to temperature drops causing locust storms and concerningly a virtual reality takeover. Already we've seen some examples of this coming true. The UK experienced the driest summer it had ever been since the 30s being declared an official drought in August. France, Italy, and Portugal have all experienced record-breaking droughts as well this year. She predicted specifically Australia would experience a flood, and in July of 2022, Sydney experienced four months worth of rain in just four days, leading to flooding. So, okay. Some of the blind clairvoyance predictions are coming true. That's stressful, but what does she have for a future? Well, don't start buying lottery tickets just yet, because Baba doesn't have anything too welcoming. She predicted that by 2023, Earth will change orbit, and by 2046, people will be living for hundreds of years through advanced technology. That part I don't mind so much. I wouldn't mind some robot hands. By 2100, she believed that the Earth's orbit will have changed sufficiently that the Earth will have moved too far, and an eternal night will fall over the sky. Not to worry though, she predicted for us that the Earth and mankind as a whole would end by 5,079. So it's only, you know, nearly 3,000 years of dark suffering. Absolutely great for the vampires, terrible for us. Number three, we all have an opinion on Elon Musk, I'm sure. 
Me personally, I still haven't forgiven him for breaking up with Grimes, and Grimes, if you're watching, I'm open. Regardless of whether you think Musk is a brilliant mind or just a moron with a Twitter account, he's been very outspoken about his fear of AI, warning that by the year 2025, things are going to get unstable or weird, in his own words. He's spoken out about it for years opining that something needs to be done or regulated on an international level. Maybe that's why the guy is so eager to get off the planet and get onto a spaceship to Mars. This is something he is very passionate about, warning us that it's going to affect our lives in ways we can't even imagine. We are the first species capable of self-annihilation. It's hard to disagree. I mean, just in our lifetime, AI has already accelerated the technology once only thought possible in sci-fi. And if I have to be completely honest, not to be too pessimistic, I don't know if I trust humanity to be that responsible with technology. If you need some comfort though, and you're looking for a reason to not toss Siri into a blender just yet, Musk also claimed in 2011 that he would put a man on Mars by 2021, and I don't remember anyone talking about that too much, so he's not right all the time. However, Musk isn't the only notable tech figure who was concerned about AI. Stephen Hawking spoke out in 2017 and claimed that if left unchecked, AI could be the worst event in the history of our civilization. It brings dangers like powerful autonomous weapons or new ways for the few to oppress the many. I don't know about you, but if one of the smartest men to have ever been on Earth says that we should probably be careful for AI for fear of creating a machine race, Skynet, or maybe something that's going to put us all in the matrix, maybe it's something to consider, you know? Maybe not everything needs a Wi-Fi connection. Number two, pretty much since we built the nuclear we have been deeply concerned that we're going to all use them on each other. I don't think anyone involved with nuclear weapons thinks we're going to get up to anything good with them, unless you are a really big Fallout fan and you have just been itching for a chance to roam the wasteland and fight feral ghouls. In 1947, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists created the Doomsday Clock as a graphic reminder of how eerily close we might be at any minute towards complete annihilation. As the hand inches towards midnight, it represents how close we are at any given moment to nuclear winter. As of this video, we are currently sitting at 100 seconds to midnight. It stood at 100 seconds for three years, but as the bulletin's official website reads, Steady is not good news. It means we haven't been taking it seriously enough yet. The bulletin urges the Russian and US presidents to identify comprehensive, actionable solutions on limiting nuclear weapon delivery systems, as well as seeking to eliminating the sole authority of launching a nuclear weapon falling in a single leader's hands, urging countries with nuclear capabilities to do the same. The demand to control nuclear weapons has been more relevant than it has in years, with growing fears all over. Full-scale nuclear conflict is one of the most real and present dangers facing humans. Humanity. And really, all it takes is one to set off a chain of dominoes none of us can come back from. Except cockroaches. They will be totally fine. They, they'll probably be flourishing, actually. Happier in, in their lane. Number one. Nostradamus was a French astrologer, physician, and probably history's most well-known seer. He's like the Michael Jordan of predicting cryptic doom sayings and warnings. He's the original doomsday prophet, and while thankfully none of his more apocalyptic predictions have happened yet, He's been disturbingly accurate for the last six centuries, and his predictions have enlightened us just as much as they have terrified us. He was able to predict things no one should have, most recently seemingly accurately predicting the circumstances surrounding the passing of Queen Elizabeth and her succession by Prince Charles. Nostradamus made many predictions, but one of his most jarring is this delightful little passage right here. For 40 years, the rainbow will not be seen. For 40 years, it will be seen every day. The dry earth will grow more parched, and there will be great floods when it is seen. Okay, so 40 years without Skittles, and then 40 years of Skittles. That is the sole thing he is referring to vis-a-vis -vis rainbows, right? I wish. Now, some have theorized that this could be referring to the scorching of a world annihilated after a nuclear but it's also possible that it could be referring to a natural collapse of the world from the climate changing worryingly fast in a lot of ways that are becoming increasingly difficult to control. 2022, for example, was the sixth hottest record year in human history, with countries across the globe experiencing record-breaking heat waves. The Antarctic sea ice hit another record low, and it might be hard to take that in any other way than the most pessimistic option, because it does kind of sound like the Earth is going to grow dry and somehow also start overflowing with floods and we're all gonna start having to fight wars over water like we're in Mad Max. Much like what Baba Vanga was speaking of, things are getting dangerously close regarding climate change across the globe. Unlike most doomsday prophecies, this one has a very clear and concerning path 
that unless we make some serious changes, could stand a chance, a dangerous chance, at becoming true. Number five on this list is the Southern Television Broadcast Interruption. Now this interruption actually happened many years in the past, but we believe that it was from some creature living in the future. Wikipedia says, the Southern Television Broadcast Interruption was a broadcast signal intrusion that occurred on the 26th of November 1977 in parts of Southern England in the United Kingdom. The audio of a Southern Television Broadcast was replaced by a voice claiming to represent the Ashtar Galactic Command, delivering a message instructing humanity to abandon its weapons so it could participate in a full awakening and achieve a higher state of evolution. After six minutes, the broadcast returned to its scheduled program. Subsequent investigations showed that the Hannington transmitter of the Independent Broadcasting Authority had rebroadcast the signal from a small but nearby unauthorized transmitter instead of the intended source at Rau Ridge Transmitting Station. The hoaxer was never identified. Now the radio station claimed that this was a breakthrough in sound and apologized, but many have theorized that breakthrough came from the future. It's believed that based on the message, this was a transmission from an alien living hundreds or maybe even thousands of years in the future. Now specifically, this alien said, this is an order that you may share in the Great Awakening. As the planet passes into the new age of Aquarius. The new age can be a time of great peace and evolution for your race, but only if your rulers are made aware of the evil forces that can overshadow their judgments. Now for those that don't know, the age of Aquarius is a term used in astrology to define the current or forthcoming age that we are currently living in. So basically this alien told us that we need to shift gears and do something different to switch the ages. How do we do that though? That all remains on Known. Number four on this list is John Titer. John Titer is one of the most well known alleged time travelers of our generation. On an online message board between the year 2000 and 2001, John filled a lot of people in on his exploits in the future. Wikipedia says John Titer became popular as he claimed to be a time traveler from 2036 on a military mission. Holding the many worlds interpretation as correct and consequently every time travel paradox as impossible, he stated that many events which occurred up to his time would indeed occur in this timeline. These included a devastating civil war in the US in 2008, followed by a short nuclear World War III in 2015, which will kill 3 billion people. In the years following his last posts and disappearance in 2001, the non-fulfillment of his specific predictions made his popularity decrease. Criticism has pointed out flaws in tighter stories and investigations suggest suggested his character may be a hoax and a creation of two siblings from Florida. So yeah, in all honesty, not really too worried about John's claims here. Mainly because most of them have already been proven to be false just based on the fact that we're in the year 2022 and they haven't happened yet. Number three on this list is the Great Earthquake. Okay guys, so this one was literally supposed to have happened like a few days ago. A TikToker named Kawhi Leonard, no, not the basketball player, is a self-proclaimed time traveler. News 18 says he has predicted quite a bizarre future, which includes 2 million people disappearing mysteriously on August 9th this year. Leonard, in his first prediction, drew up America's biggest earthquake, known as the Great Split, on July 14th, 2022. The time traveler then mentioned the emergence of a new species of creatures called stalkers the same year. So here's the positive. We are past July 14th. Therefore, we should be on the clear on this one, one would think. However, even though we're past the date of the Great Earthquake, I wouldn't be shocked if my time traveler was off by a few weeks in his calculations or something like that, which could then mean it's still possible for this event to transpire. There's also the whole other event that happens in August that we have to worry about. Hopefully, it's all just a bunch of smoke though, because a giant earthquake, two million dead, and these things called stalkers, they don't sound like a great time. Number two on this list is the LA water park. The Daily Mail says, a man claiming to be a time traveler says he has photographic evidence that Los Angeles will be completely underwater by the year 5000. The man known as Edward claims he was part of a top secret experiment while working at a lab 
laboratory in LA back in 2004 that allowed him to time travel to the future. In an interview on Apex TV, Edward, whose face and voice had been disguised, said he traveled to the year 5000 and met with a man who informed him of the post apocalyptic floods. It was unbelievable. I was standing on a huge wooden platform. Not only me, houses, buildings, vehicles, of course all made from wood, he said in the interview, which took place in a secret location in his native Armenia. After I realized it was the same city, Los Angeles, but underwater, just it was flooded and the whole city was underwater and people were living on the water. Edward suggested he managed to take a photo of LA underwater with a camera he had time traveled with as part of the experiment. He pulled the photo out from his coat during the interview, which surfaced online. Edward claims the flooding was a direct result of of global warming. Pieces of ice in both poles saw that enough had been melted and the world dropped under the water, he said. So obviously there are a few questions that come up when we hear this news. First off, how did you end up in LA in the year 5000? Like if you can actually travel all the way there, then that's pretty sick, but you're gonna need to show a bit of proof here, my guy. Then we need to start evaluating whether or not this could actually happen or not, and I mean, I do hate to say, but I could totally believe this. Number one on this list is the Las Vegas clouds. So apparently in pretty much exactly 100 years, you are not gonna wanna be in Las Vegas. David Coleman says, a self-proclaimed time traveler from the year 2030 has released a video he claims to be of Las Vegas in 100 years time. A clip that appeared on the YouTube channel Apex TV showed a man known as Noah discussing his experiences from the future. He shows what he claims is footage from 2120 and tells viewers he came back to 2018 after a failed top secret mission. And Noah reckons his video clearly shows the impact global warming will have in the future. He explained the red clouds are global warming. You can see it's everywhere. I can remember it being incredibly hot. I'm pretty sure they're working on it in the future. Well, if there are red clouds of death in the sky, then I would hope that somebody's looking into it. This is obviously pretty scary stuff because 2120 really isn't that far away from right now. Like I probably won't be around to see that, but it's possible that a few of you watching this video, maybe you have a shot at watching that firsthand. Now in all honesty, let's be real. Do I trust the word of this guy who says he's a time traveler? Eh, not really. But once again, and similarly to our LA entry, this is very possible. Possible. I don't know if we're gonna have red clouds per se, but a total change in the environment and natural disasters could totally happen. <laughs> 